How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be starting with a Pioneer tier list. This list is going to consist of all of the decks that had a 3 limb result, meaning 3-1 or 4-0, a challenge top 16 in the last week, or that have three or more ranked finishes on MTG Goldfish in the last 14 days. So the reason I'm doing both of these is that these should give us a good look at the winner's metagame, as well as giving us a look at decks that you should expect to see if you're playing in the Pioneer Leagues or Challenges. Now, I've broken this up into five tiers, uh, S through D. Obviously, S tier is going to be the highest, D is the lowest. This is going to be a combination of how often we saw it finish well, as well as taking into account how I think these decks line up moving into this week. So this is looking at it for the week of February 21st through February 28th, and looking forward to the weekend of March 5th. Now before we get into that, if you want to know what decks I have in different tiers a little bit earlier, a text version of this video with just the tiers and all the different decks that was posted earlier this week on my Patreon. If you want to go support me and the content that I make, really would appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. Lots of good content over there, including breakdowns of all the different 5-0s that come out each week, and like I said, access to these tiers a little bit earlier in text form. All right, now let's start with D tier. Now D tier is going to be the tier that, honestly, I'm either a little surprised that these decks made it on here, or I don't think they're very well positioned to moving forward. If you had the choice to avoid playing a D tier deck, I think that would be for the best. So first up, we have Mono White Michikos which is the mono white version of the Insoul deck. Uh, obviously, since it doesn't have blue, it doesn't have Insoul, but it's the same idea. Mono white leveraging the new enchantment saga from Kamigawa to have a little bit better mana base and a little bit more streamlined consistency. The deck shown up a couple of times here in the last week or two, uh, finishing with a couple of goldfish 5-0s as well as a prelim one, but I don't think this is the strongest version of this deck, and I think playing a worse version of a deck that already exists is not a winning strategy. Next up, we have Green Black Midrange, which managed to sneak in to our list with a challenge top 16. I think this style of deck is reasonable at punishing the heavy Luris meta we were seeing a little bit last week and the week before, but it's still not a very strong deck, and as we move towards the bigger midrange decks this week, I don't think it's where you want to be. Next up, we have Jeskai Ascendancy, a deck that will consistently show up, has done really well in the past, but I still think is not very well positioned right now. You don't have a lot of agency against the control decks. The linear aggro decks get under you well enough and have enough disruption that you're unlikely to be able to kill them in time. And with the printing of cards like March of the Otherworldly Light, you have a lot more things that can interact along with the Seiju that can just stop your combo in its tracks. Lastly for D tier we have Esper Greasefang, a deck that broke out with the release of Kamigawa. This deck I think has some promise and I certainly have other versions of the Greasefang decks higher but I think the Esper version is the least resilient as well as having the least proactive game plan and I don't think you really want to be playing a mid to late game with this kind of deck. I think you want to be leaning into the power of early Park Hellions. Next up, we have the C tier decks. These decks are going to be contenders. You're going to see them pretty regularly. You shouldn't be surprised if you're into them. I don't think these are decks that you're going to be expecting to be winning challenges, but you should certainly will see them in the winner's metagame. First up, we have Jun Sacrifice. Uh, most of the Jun Sacrifice decks have moved towards the Karn's Kitchen version, running Karn the Great Creator and leaning on the power of uh, the Oni Anvil cards, but I think the more traditional Jun Sacrifice, Citadel, Corvold, whatever version you're looking at, I think we are seeing that version start to slip out of prevalence as these lower to the ground versions that take advantage of the cheap artifacts and that synergy are going to keep moving up the chain. Next up we have Mono Green Stompy. This is the version that leans all in on Vivian Arcbow Ranger and trying to deploy as fast a clock as possible. I think that of the Mono Green decks we've seen recently doing well, this is the weakest of them in that you you are an aggro deck that doesn't have a lot of reach, so you still have to win through combat, and with enough removal verdicts and other things floating around, you don't have a ton of great matchups in the upper echelons. You'll still do well into other aggro decks because your creatures are naturally well-sized, but even some of those decks like Heroic can get around you pretty easily. Next up we have Blue Black Control, a deck that will continue to show up regardless of how good I think it is, especially with the printing of 
March of the Otherworldly Light and The Wandering Emperor, I think you should be looking more at Blue-White if you're looking for a pure control shell. Even though we've seen that a new Triome just got spoiled and we might see Esper in the future, I think right now Blue-Black is not the place to be for the control decks. Again, you'll still have some favorable matchups, still be able to do reasonably well, I just don't think you're giving yourself the best chance to win. Next up we have Mono Black Aggro. This is a deck that sort of fell off the face of the earth uh, over time, once the most dominant deck back when Smuggler's Copter was around, it's ebbed and flowed for a lot of Pioneer just on the basis that low aggression, low curve aggression plus Thoughtseize is a great combo and having removal to be able to clear the path is very strong. However, this is a deck that still sort of falls prey to the fact that you are not as strong as some other aggro decks. You don't have the same leverage of cards like Luris and decks are a lot more able to answer your threats than they were in the past. Things like Rankle and Spawn of Mayhem are not as scary as they once were. Next, we have a new deck that sort of gained a lot from Kamigawa, and that is the Red White Shrapnel Blast deck. It operates very much like a burn deck, but in this case, you're a little bit more all in. You have more artifact creatures to turn on some of your synergies and then finish the game off with a handful of burn. The reason I think this deck, even though it continues to show up in leagues, is not as strong as some other versions of Red White right now is mainly that I think that the low to the ground nature does leave you somewhat vulnerable to other aggro decks that can interact favorably. Obviously, single creature decks like White Black Auras are going to have trouble keeping their things alive, but I don't think you are generally favored against a lot of the better decks in the format, and decks like Red Black Oni that are very prevalent are going to be able to go up the ground, kill your creatures, and gain enough life that the burn shouldn't be fast enough to get under you. Next up we have Mono White Book. This is a deck that stirred up quite a bit of controversy on Magic Twitter recently. Uh, this is the Book of the Exalted Deeds combo that goes with your Muta Vault so that you essentially can't lose if your opponent can't interact with your lands. It's a very strong mid-range deck that goes way over the top, especially once you get the Blink Loop going. In a world where we're moving to a little bit of a slower metagame to answer these Luris heavy decks that we saw recently, I think Mono White Book is well positioned. But as we move into the more pure control and grindy decks. I think you're going to see Mono White Book start to fall off as it doesn't have a particularly strong control or combo matchup if you're able to interact with their combo. Next up we have Niv to Light, a deck that again will always sort of show up uh, very similar to Incarnation. When you have a toolbox available to you, you can customize it to attack the meta however you want. Again, the pure low to the ground Luris decks, things like Heroic, kept it down a little bit recently. But as we move closer to mid-range meta, I think Niv will gain some footing again until we swing all the way back to combo being better. Next up, you have Naya Winota, a deck that will always show up on tier lists because the free win potential is so high. But I think that people have started to figure out how to play against Winota, and outside of their best draws, is a very beatable deck. It doesn't seem to be putting up many results in challenges or prelims, and I think that, again, having a bad Blue-Red Phoenix matchup will continue to hold it down in bigger events. Next up, we have Blue White and Soul, the better version of the Mono White Michiko's deck we talked about earlier, a deck that saw massive prevalence the first week of Kamigawa's release. I think this deck has been reasonably attacked. Most of the meta is able to answer small threats, and of the Luris decks, you are the least resilient if they are able to answer your artifact threats, along with cards like Culling Ritual starting to see play. And Soul is probably one of the least well positioned low to the ground Luris decks right now, but again, the power level of any of these decks is able to win. I just wouldn't expect it to be taken down any large tournaments anytime soon. Next up, a little bit of a surprise is White Black Auras, though I think it could very well be considered B tier just because of the power level of Light Paws. I think people have well adjusted to this deck. People are not dying to it or leaving themselves vulnerable as they once were. And I think the meta is very prepared for this kind of deck right now. It's a deck that will continue to show up and will rise and fall with the rest of the meta. But for right now, I would leave your light paws at home because I think the meta has adjusted to answer it well. Next up, we have B tier decks. These are the decks that I think are very strong choices, especially for prelims and challenges. I can't say that I think they would be favored to win a challenge, but I think think that on a good day they certainly could and if you're looking to put up solid results these are definitely decks that I would start working on and if a meta shift changes they could easily crop up into front runners for a tournament. First up we have Abzan Greasefang, the I think better version of the Greasefang deck. Uh, there's the all-in version that uses Stitcher Supplier 
Grizzly Salvage and Seder Wayfinder to dump cards into the yard. And then there's the version that's a little bit slower, tends to build up its value a little bit more organically, uses Rotting Regisaur to dump your cards out of your hand if they get stuck. And then again, leveraging the power of Grease Fang to get early Parhelions. I think this version, especially the one that's playing Soren as an additional way to rebuy your Grease Fangs from the graveyard and give your Parhelion lifelink, are the build that I would be looking at adapting for this week. Next up, we have Bant Spirits as we move towards a more mid range focus or control focus metagame, starting to move away from the pure Luris meta. I think Bant Spirits continues to pick up points, being able to get over the top of the uh, uh, red black oni decks by going in the air is very powerful as well as being able to interact favorably with control coco decks tend to be very strong especially when they have other interactive elements when we start moving towards the control meta and i think even as we continue forward and potentially find other control or combo decks in the meta Band Spirits would be good. It was naturally hated out by some of the more aggressive Luris decks that could answer their th your threats while also playing their own, things like Heroic, but I think as those start to fall more and more out of the metagame right now, Band Spirits is looking up. Speaking of Red White Heroic, that is our next deck. Even though it hasn't been seeing nearly the same success as it did a few weeks ago, it is still a powerhouse deck you need to respect, especially if we keep trending in the way of midrange. You're not going to want to play too much Heroic, but if it goes that one step further into combo control territory, that is when Heroic comes right back into the meta. When you see things like Jeskai Ascendancy, Lotus Field, or Blue Eye Control, that's the time you want those Red White Heroic to come out swinging, especially if midrange starts moving away from the Black Thought Thoughtseize package, or sorry, Thoughtseize Fatal Push package, Heroic can easily steal events, and I think that in the direction that I would expect the meta to be moving, Heroic is still primed to stick around, and in the future could be a S-tier deck again. Finally, the last B-tier deck I have is Lotus Field. This is a deck that has been doing exceptionally in the prelims recently, and still doing very well in the challenges. It's a deck that feels like it should be struggling given the presence of the Lord of the Ground Luris decks, but like I said, as these decks start to get pushed out by moving a step slower and a step slower, Lotus Field gets better and better. This is what we keep seeing over and over again is the heavy Luris meta gets pushed out by a mid-range meta, the mid-range meta gets pushed out by an even slower meta. That's when Lotus Field really likes to come back and prey on it before finally we swing back to the Luris decks really preying on these one turn two slow combo decks. Next up, we have the A-tier decks. These are decks that I would absolutely not be shocked to see win a challenge. I think they are great choices for this week. And I think a lot of the time, these are the decks that I think you should be focusing on understanding their matchups as well as understanding how they operate if your plan is to play big events this week. First up, we have Mono Green Car, and this deck won a challenge last weekend, and I think it has been very good for a while. It really beats up on other mid-range decks, especially decks like Red Black Oni, and I think that this deck can go so far over the top of other mid-range decks while still having good game against aggro by being able to play early Cavalier of Thorns that are nearly impossible to get through for these low to the ground Luris decks. You struggle very hard against pure control and combo, but Karn the Great Creator gives you some outs against combo by being able to lock them out with things like Damping Sphere and God Pharaoh Statue. While I still don't think those are matchups you want to see until we start seeing the meta fully slow down all the way, while we're still in that mid-range arms race, I think Monogreen Karn is a great choice to play. Next up is Red Black Oni Anvil, a deck we've mentioned a lot because it was very, very popular last week and the week before. This is one of the best Luris decks at being able to grind out, get incremental advantage, and then kill your opponent through the power of sacrificing your cards with Meat Hook Massacre and other Recursive Engines. I think that this is probably one of the last weeks that this deck is going to be A tier, as people have continually tried to hate it out and the presence of more Karns in the meta will make it tough. However, if we start trending more and more towards pure control, there is a chance that Red Black Oni can just grind out these decks and transform into a little bit more mid-rangey and be able to sideboard effectively against these control decks. I think it's still a good choice right now, but this next week will show us whether or not it drops down or continues to hold as a solid A contender. Next up, our last a tier deck and that is blue white control with the printing of march of the otherworldly light and the wandering emperor we have seen blue white control have a renaissance we've seen blue white control have a re-emergence as the best control deck in the format i think you're able to handle most decks in tow that we've mentioned before 
you destroy the mid-range decks that take a step off and due to your ability to pressure aggro decks through just various wraths interaction and planeswalkers you're able to handle most of the aggro decks wandering emperor and all of the storm giants really helps you close a lot quicker so time shouldn't be an issue i think blue white control is very well primed to be a tier one deck for a very long time with these new tools as well as being able to customize your removal package depending on the meta finally we have s tier and this is the deck that i think is the the best choice to play this week specifically i think looking at the rest of the meta it shouldn't be any shock this deck has been s tier for a very very long time right now i think that is blue red phoenix i think you are favored into blue white control you are favored into decks like mono green karn you have good game against basically the whole field of relevant decks you're able to beat up a lot of the aggro decks just through your removal and while obviously this is a deck that continues to put up great results it is a deck that will always have a target on its back. So you need to be ready for anything when you're playing this deck and be ready to attack the meta as they shift to you. But I think until something gets banned out of Phoenix or the meta truly shifts back to again, pushing it out with all of those incredibly low to the ground linear aggro decks that are able to actually interact favorably, I think you are in a good spot to continue to play Phoenix and do very well. So that's the tier list for this week. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, what decks you'd like to know where they place in our meta, as well as if you think that this is a good read of where the meta will go in this next weekend.